All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. We're going to look at a uh, PowerPoint entitled Insects. This is going to be insects for turf grass, and hopefully you're watching this after, uh, um, right after the lecture that I give with had the pictures of the insects. And this is getting a little more. You know, it's a short PowerPoint presentation, but it's, you know, it's got some details in here that I think will help go along with that uh, with that first one that you saw. So well, let's get started. Intro: The adult insects have three pairs of legs, and then. Uh, depending on what type of insect that you're going to see in the turf grass industry, or they're, they're going to have either chewing or sucking mouth parts. And then you're going to see different damages um, related to those, whether they're chewing on them or they're sucking on them. You can actually uh, you know, tell pretty much what the insect is based on the damage that you're seeing. Well, these insects, they have skeletons on the outside of their bodies, and then molting is when they dissolve their old exoskeletons and produce new, uh, newer big ones. Each period between the malt is called an instar, and actually there's even a pesticide called instar that would be used uh, during this time. Metamorphosis. Uh, insects begin their lives as eggs. They progress through immature stages and then become adults. Um, it's, it's when there's a change in appearance from, from being immature to the adult stage. And I know this is a refresher for most of you. Um, because you're probably taking insects and disease this summer as well in the program so what this just let this be a review for those of you who may not have um, been familiar with this please read the, uh, the information in in your textbook uh, it's you know the first page of the chapter talks about metamorphosis so please uh, um, read that as well if the change is dramatic when it comes to metamorphosis uh, it's going to be a complete metamorphosis and the babies are going to be called larvae if it's a simple change, such as the insect getting wings, uh, it's going to be gradual metamorphosis, and we're going to call these babies the nymphs. Here's a life cycle of a chinch bug. I can't remember this if this is in our uh, textbook or not. Uh, but you know, here we have the eggs, and then we've got B through F uh, being the five immature stages, and then finally G uh, being the adult. Here we see the same thing with the chafer. Uh, we've got the egg, you know, it's going all the way through first instar larva, second, third, perpetual stage, the pupa, and then the adult. Uh, insects are going to injure the turf grass primarily by chewing the plant tissue, or they can suck the juice uh, from the leaves and stems. And the amount of injury depends on the size of the population. Well, if you've got if you've got the adult insects, you know, they've already gone through metamorphosis and they're the adult. <sighs> My experience, I haven't seen that much damage from turf scrap because I haven't really spread too many insecticides in my career other than for grub control, um, which, you know, the grubs are down in the soil. That seems to have been a bigger problem uh, when I was doing it full time, uh, was, was managing the grub control. And not having to worry about the insects that were, you know, on top of the ground feeding on the grass, um, you know, because even even the insects flying around that are on top of the grass, if they're feeding on it, usually there's not a significant number of the pest to actually damage the turf. Where you're going to see most of your damage from insects is when they're when they're going to be in the uh, you know the larva stage. They're below ground. They're feeding on the roots. That's where you're going to see more damage. Um, and people. Clients aren't going to really be uh, too particular, you know. If, if they see a few bugs out on top of the ground eating on the grass, they're, they're not going to worry about it um, uh, as much. But they'll notice grub damage pretty quickly. So uh, that's probably what you will probably be doing most of your lawn care career. Uh, will be doing um, grub control and, and taking care of the insects that are that are still down in the ground. Uh, the size of the population is affected by the speed of the reproduction rate. Uh, you know how many populations are they, uh, uh, or how many generations are they, uh, you know, having a year? Your insecticide applications, and then favorable, unfavorable weather conditions. Uh, and with insecticides, guys, you got to make sure that you're uh, that you're buying the right insecticide at the right time of the insect's life stage. Um, you don't want to um, you don't want to buy grub control when the grubs have already matured and became Japanese beetles. 
uh, root feeding insects, you know, grubs, you know, uh, what I'm more familiar with. And, and when I was uh, in the career field, uh, they're the larvae of the beetles uh, and the mass chafer or the Japanese beetle. Mole crickets are a species of cricket that lives in the soil. Nasty little creatures, as we've seen from the previous lecture. Then wireworms are the larvae of click beetles. And then ground pearls are piercing, sucking scale insects that uh, are covered by a waxy shell. Uh, leaf and stem feeders, the chinch bugs, they're going to suck the juices from the tissue and they're going to put some toxic poison into the xylem of the grass. Your side webworms, cutworms, and armyworms are caterpillars that chew on the leaf tissue. We saw good pictures of those in the previous lecture. And then wax covered scale insects such as the Bermuda grass scale uh, are going to suck the plant juices. The annual bluegrass weevil is a beetle that probably uh, that primarily feeds on poanna. Uh, others include leaf hoppers, grasshoppers, fruit flies, even aphids. Control, you know, keeping the grass thick, dense, um, you know, fertilized properly, has the nutrients it needs, uh, is going to let that grass heal from insect injury. Grub control, grubs though, they get down there and they eat all those roots. And you can tell when somebody's got actual uh, grubs in their lawn. It'll start turning brown, but you can go over and you can actually just pick up the grass. It's like it's being cut with a side cutter. They've chewed those roots all the way up to the top. It started dying quickly, and you can go over and you can start just lifting pieces of grass. You've got grubs. Insecticides are not, not normally used until it's determined that the insect population is large enough to potentially cause unacceptable levels of injury. And they don't take that many. They don't take that many grubs per square feet. Uh, some cultivars exhibit resistance to insect injury. Non-traditional insecticides such as insecticide growth regulators are being developed today. Um, when we're spraying our insecticides. You know, know your thresholds, um, and know when to look for the pest. You need to know the life cycles. You need to know when these eggs are hatching, and then you know which time of the year you might start seeing, um, you know, the larvae, and then you know when are you going to see the adult stages of the insect. Understand what stage uh, in the insect's life cycle is the best time to control it. You're going to have to do a little research there. And then pick the least toxic insecticide uh, that will be effective. You know, and that's part of your IPM. Understand the characteristics of an insecticide uh, that affect how well it will work. For example, if it's broken down by sunlight, it should be uh, therefore applied at night. And the end. I do apologize for this being so short, guys. I know you. I know you like hearing me talk, so. I promise I'll get another uh, another long one up pretty soon. I, actually, I'm just kidding. Um, with with the homework, guys, I do want you. Uh, you're going to have to research some of this. These questions that I've come up with, um, you're going to have to think a little bit outside the box, and um, you know, try it. I mean, it's going to make you research. It's going to make you kind of look up some of the answers, and um, which in return is helping you learn the material. Anyway, I'll see you in the next lecture. Thanks.